Hello, Flickering Myth family, and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ, and we are so excited to dive into this new video. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're not yet, click that button, hit that little bell. We have so much great content coming this month and for the rest of the year. Now, let's get into the second Blumhouse movie of the year. We're talking about Imaginary. Imagination. Walking into this movie, I didn't know what to expect. The trailers were interesting. It definitely gave it a certain kind of tone and energy, and I did not know if the, that was just the marketing campaign or if that was going to be the movie. What kind of tone and vibe was it getting? Well, it was giving me family-friendly horror, and I don't mean that insultingly. I think we need movies like this. Gateway horror. Do I think this is the scariest movie I've ever seen? No, not at all. I actually didn't find it to be that scary, though it was creepy. There was a couple moments that really built up some good scares with a good jump scare attached to it, and I really liked how wackadoo crazy the end of this movie got. So yeah, I, I think this is fine, but this is good gateway horror. This is a good way of introducing a younger generation or someone who maybe doesn't really like horror movies. This is a perfect way of getting them into it. So let's say you have a partner, uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, who isn't into horror movies, but you really like them. This is the type of movie I suggest throwing on. It's it's not going to be too graphic, too scary to scare them off, but it's also not insanely like heartbreaking and tense where you're like, it's not hereditary, you know, where you're like, wow, I have an essential crisis about my life because of this movie. No, I think Imaginary does what exactly what it needs to do. It's scary. It does, it feels childlike in a way. And again, that's not insultingly. I like that this really feels like the, the, the creepiness under the bed or the imaginary friend that you have that may be a little bit dark sided. This movie really captures those elements. It, it, it's childlike. And I, and I, enjoy that. I thought um, Jeff Wadlow was really smart for going this route. Blumhouse has, we'll talk about Blumhouse in a second, but overall Blumhouse has been in a spot where they've been in the PG-13 sphere and that's fine, but how do you use that PG-13? How do you express your horror art through a rating system that maybe isn't the, allowing you to be the most graphic or the most shocking? Well, movies like this are a good way. You go for family scares. This is, will scare grandma to your little six-year-old. And that's exactly what I wanted from this. The marketing, that's what it was selling me. And that's what it ended up giving me. And overall, I liked what it had to offer. Imaginary follows mostly Jessica. She's our main character played by DeWanda Wise. She is a new mother. She's a step parent to these young girls and she's with her husband Max and she's trying to figure out what the hell to do with her life. She is trying to move back her family to her childhood home but in her childhood home, she left something. It, you know, she has a rough childhood. I, I, this is spoiler free, by the way, very spoiler free breakdown of the plot. But yeah, she had a rough childhood. So when she left her childhood home, there was unanswered questions. Maybe people she did not say goodbye to. Who was that? Well, her imaginary friend, Chauncey, who now attaches himself to her youngest stepdaughter. She has two stepdaughters. One of them is a teenager uh, played by Tegan Burns. Zero time. Zero time for her stepmother. Hates her. Very teenage stepmother vibes. But there's still a level to this relationship where it felt believable. It didn't feel like I was, you know, just watching evil step parent versus evil stepchild. I understood. This was a very well acted family. Altogether, the family dynamic for this felt very real. But Chauncey finds the youngest daughter, played by uh, Piper, who is. Oh my goodness, I had the chance to interview her. You could check that out here. One of my favorite kid actors I've ever met. So adorable, so sassy, so exactly like, mm, this wasn't that scary to film, girl. Okay, okay, little one. But yes, Chauncey decides to attach himself to the little one. And now Jessica has to figure out what the hell to do. What is actually going on? What is this mysterious figure? This movie takes itself through some twists and turns as well. I was genuinely like, Oh, that's what they're doing? Oh, that, like, I, I'm not saying this was a groundbreaking plot. I wasn't like, oh my god, this is the end of, like, you know, the usual suspects. But it was truly like, wow, you guys took me through a ride. This could have been a very straightforward story. It, it didn't, you know, it didn't need to do any extra twist or turns. But the last, like, 30 minutes of this movie, it really took a different route. And the way they set up this story, I was really intrigued by it. What I really like about Imaginary is you can see this world, this universe, being expanded on. Imaginary Friends, I, I, I when I interviewed Jeff, I interviewed back to the director and the cast. So when I interviewed Jeff, he talked about this movie is not called Chauncey. It's called Imaginary. We can expand 
expand out on this. And I love that this gave me a universe. It is very insidious in that way, where you can tell that this is just a haunted little spooky movie, but there's a deep backstory, that a lore that they could get into. And I think that's a really smart avenue that they could approach with this story. Do I want to see Imaginary 2 Electric Boogaloo next year? Who knows? But I really think this, this has potential. There is something to do here because I like the story of watching Jessica face off with his imaginary friend and it could go through, you know, they talk about it in different cultures, in different, you know, households, what the imaginary friend's name is. I mean, in my house, the scary monster that we use to scare the little one, his name's Kuko, which they mentioned in this movie. So my little, uh, my six-year-old stepson was like, Kuko's real? Yes, bro. Kuko's real. So I really like this element. Like I said, the, the family vibe aspect, but also that imaginary friend world, the what they could do with these kind of haunts and stuff. You could literally go to different households around America. You can go to Mexico, to Japan, to Russia. There are so many places you could travel with this story and how cultures handle imaginary friends. It reminds me a little bit of what they were doing with The Conjuring. Like they had the uh, La La Rona one, you know, how they had that whole universe where they're going to different spots and kind of telling you the stories there. Paranormal Activity even did it well with the Japanese one, and then they did the marked ones, which was very Latino-influenced. I think there is a lot of potential to expand Imaginary. This is a solid movie. I don't think it's, like, again, it's not the most scary. It's not the most groundbreaking. It was an in-and-out Blumhouse movie. This is what I actually expect from Blumhouse. Things like Night Swim this year wasn't my favorite movie. There was a couple last year that I was like, uh, all right, but this one, this is this has a lot of potential to grow, to be a staple in a lot of younger horror fans' lives, and to also grow as a franchise in this industry. Is Imaginary taking Blumhouse into a new direction? It's not just this movie. Between Five Nights at Freddy's and Imaginary, it seems like Blumhouse is finding out what to do with PG-13 horror, how to get the most scares out of it, how to market it well. That's a hard task. Can Blumhouse be moving to a family-friendly horror route where you're getting scares, you're getting horror movies, but leave the more cerebral stuff to a Warner Brothers, an A24, Neon, leave that for them and let's give more mainstream horror, more accessible horror. Like I said, for, you know, grandma to the, the your dad to the little ones to your aunt down the street, they can watch a movie from Blumhouse and not be too shocked, too bewildered and just get exactly what they want. I think that's a good route for them. I didn't love Five Nights at Freddy's mostly because of the story, but I loved what they did with the PG-13 horror there. Same thing with Imaginary. There is some, you know, some kills in this. There is some shocks, some twists, some turns that really did play well, and it felt like it fit within its world. I called PG-13 uh, limitations in my interview with Jeff, and he, he disagreed with me. He says it's not a limitation. It's how you do these types of stories. And again, PG-13 horror does not need to be a slur. Family-friendly, you know, gateway horror isn't a negative, isn't a bad thing. We need new generation of horror fans. What are we going to do? Stop off with, you know, the 25-year-olds and, well, horror movies is done for people. No, we need things like Imaginary to lure more people into the genre that we all love so much. And I think this movie, with its, you know, strong script, with its good acting, with its fun little scares that it built up, this could really be a, a, a move for Blumhouse, getting in a younger generation, scaring the pants off of them so then they can move on to something more advanced in horror that's what we want it's the iceberg thing let's go to the tip of the iceberg and let's you know let's not throw them to a serbian film yet but still imaginary you know take the tears down imaginary maybe a, a halloween maybe texas chainsaw massacre and then the poughkeepsie tapes like yeah you know what journey into it find horror but we need things like imaginary to begin the journey into the genre well, everyone, that is it for my breakdown of the movie Imaginary. It comes out this weekend. Make sure you guys see it. Check out our interview. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Make sure you comment. All that jazz. There is so much to talk about with Blumhouse, with Imaginary. What was your imaginary friend's name? That's the question I want to leave off with you all today. If you had an imaginary friend growing up, what was their name? Share it down below. Share your feelings in my review or this movie right down there as well. And let's talk about Imaginary.